All right, in this activity, um, this, is, this is called the Spectroscope Lab Activity. It'll be on page 17 in your packet, so look at that one to complete this. Uh, to do this activity, we're going to be using a spectroscope, which looks like this. So here's my spectroscope. Um, I know you've used these in chemistry before. Um, it looks kind of like a triangle. There's an eyepiece on this end, um, and this end is where the light comes in. There's a number of different ways they work, but all of the spectroscopes that we use split the light into its different colors in some way. So the light will ideally come into this side right here. Hopefully you can see where the light comes in. Uh, most, I think this one, the simpler ones, the eyepiece is actually a, a diffraction grating, which has a whole bunch of scratches in it. And, and the light comes in here, and it hits the diffraction grating and reflects off of it back down to this end. But as it reflects off, um, it goes through that diffraction gradient to the other side and it gets split into its individual colors so that as that light reflects back down to this side, what you see is not white light, for instance, if we're looking at the lights in the ceiling, but you're seeing all of the different colors that are that, that light is composed of. And those colors get thrown onto a measurement scale and we can actually see um, the actual the different wavelengths of each of the colors in the light. That measurement scale will look something like this, where the light will come through here, and you'll see the light thrown against the measurement scale here. And let me show you a little bit of what that would look like. If you see this picture, this is a picture of what it looks like to look at the light coming from the sun. And I'll zoom in on this a little bit for you. So this is the light coming from the sun. This is what it would look like through the spectroscope if you looked um, into the window. I want you to first of all notice the scale down at the bottom. The scale is in nanometers and these are the wavelengths of the light. Now visible light, we can see visible light, we'll talk about this today. Visible light is from 400 to 700 nanometers. That's the light that our eyes can see. And you'll notice that the sunlight has got all the different colors in it from red, or sorry, from blue all the way down to the red end. This is a big rainbow. Uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and down to the violet end. The uh, low wavelengths have a high frequency. The higher wavelengths have a low frequency. I want you to notice that it's like a smear of colors here. Uh, uh, the, the sunlight contains every single frequency that it possibly can. Um, but if we look at... If we look at the light coming from the fluorescent lights in the ceiling it looks more like this and so you can see there are uh, all different colors there we can see the blues on this end the, the purples the blues the green the yellow and the orange and we can see the red but notice it looks quite different from what this one did this is a, a full spectrum and now we see a bunch of lines and and the reason for that is that the fluorescent lights in the ceiling actually sort of just mimic the light coming from outside the lights in the ceiling is a is a it's a gas. There's electricity running through that gas that's causing the electrons to jump up to an to an energy level and come back down, and it's fluorescing that at those atoms, and and they're only giving off certain frequencies of light. All right, so we see this color here. I, I see a, a you know this 400 nanometer line is way down on the purple end, and we see a a real blue line. This is about so this would be. Uh, 475 nanometers let's say uh, the green line this is probably 540 and then of course we got the reds down here the big red line is just over 600 nanometers right so what I want you to do uh, with this activity as the lab activity says um, we're gonna look down here and it says to look at the spectroscope at the white lights in the ceiling which is what we were just looking at it says what colors do you observe in the spectroscope and at what wavelengths do they show up so what I want you to do here is simply look at this picture again that I'm gonna put up here you can pause the video just write down the colors that you see and the wavelength that they show up for instance the first color I would write down is over here on the right side I would call that purple or violet and it's at 400 nanometers right so I would write purple 400 nanometers. So take a minute, look at this picture right here, and write down all the colors and the wavelengths that you see. And go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so now hopefully you've written down all your colors and wavelengths here from the light coming from the ceiling. Again, that's white light. So we see that white light actually contains the entire rainbow. It's got red and orange and yellow 
green, blue, indigos, violets. It's got all those colors in them. They're very specific colors. They're not like the sunlight. Again, sunlight contains actually every single frequency that it can. There aren't specific lines, but now that we're looking at the fluorescent lights that are glowing because of a specific gas burning, or not burning, but fluorescing, um, there's just going to be specific lines, but it's still, when you put all these colors together, it looks like white light. Well, now what we can do, the next part of the activity wants you to look through a gas tube. And what a gas tube is, is a tube that's evacuated of air, and it's a glass tube that we put a specific kind of gas in it. Maybe helium, hydrogen, neon, argon, something like that. And we do the same thing in that gas tube that we do to the fluorescent lights in the ceiling. We run a current through it, and it causes the electrons in those atoms to fluoresce a certain color, right? And so gas tubes can be really beautiful, but what we can do is look at the light produced by that gas tube through the spectroscope, and what it'll do is it'll fluoresce, uh, it'll give us certain certain lines, right? So what I'm going to do, here's the lights from the ceiling. Now notice what we get. This is a gas tube filled with argon. Let me blow this up for you. Here's what argon looks like. So that's what the argon gas would look like. You get a, a big red line over here. Um, you get some greens and you get some violets down here on the violet end. Notice you don't really get any blues and you don't really get any yellows and oranges. So it's not white light anymore. It's going to be a different color. And I can't remember exactly what color it looks like to your eyes. But this is what the spectrum would look like if you're looking at argon gas. Um, here's a spectrum for um, this is hydrogen gas, right? So this is hydrogen gas looks very different. We have one red line, one blue line, and one violet line. You can see where those are. This is the spectrum for helium gas. Helium gas looks different as well. There's a, this is a probably an orange or a yellow down here. There's a, a blue-green band, some blue bands, and some violet bands. Uh, this one is, uh, what is this, hydrogen? Mercury. This one is mercury. Uh, violet, green, yellow. There's a little bit of a red there, but not much. We mostly see these violets. Um, and then this last one here is for neon, neon gas. With neon, we get a lot of reds, a little bit of orange and yellow, and some green. We get nothing on this end. So we get some interesting patterns set up by these different gases. All right, so what I want to do, I'm going to go through these again in the video, and I just want you to pick one of them. Pick one of these gases that seems to stick out to you, and it says to simply copy what you see down here on the spectroscope that it's on the paper. You can either do it with colored pencils if you have them, or with markers, or you can do it with a pencil and label the colors, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go through those now and just pause on whichever one you want to pause on, whichever one you want to do. All right, so again, this one is argon. This video or this picture is the spectroscope, the spectrum for helium. Sorry, hydrogen. This is hydrogen. This one is helium. Here's mercury. And last but not least, we have neon. Neon gas. All right, so if you missed any of those, go back through the video, pause where you need it, and then copy that spectrum down on your paper. All right, the next part says after identifying the wavelengths emitted by the gas tube, right? So ideally you have some lines drawn in here, let's say. Um, they want you to calculate the corresponding frequencies of the color of light, right? So we have the wavelengths from up here. We simply measure them on the scale, and we want to calculate the frequency. And hopefully you now know an equation that has wavelength and frequency in it, and that equation is V equals F lambda. Now it says the speed of light can be found in your formula chart. Go ahead and look there. You'll find the speed of light. We're dealing with light now. Uh, so you need to go and find the V for light. It is in your formula chart. I'm not going to put it here. Uh, and so you're going to simply do a calculation for each one of these lines you see. Some of them have more than others. I want you to see as many as you can get. I want you to get um, 
at least four lines, at least four calculations here done. Write your, get, do your work in this space. And then here's the important part. We want you to draw a conclusion about the relationship between the frequency of the light and the wavelength of light. See what happens. What happens, in other words, when the, fr when the wavelength increases? As we get higher and higher wavelengths, what happens to the frequencies? Simply calculate those here. And then part two, there's going to be another video um, that deals with with the spectroscope activity with part two, and I want you to complete that part with the other video.